most organisms are made up of about 80% of water. Now this can change slightly between organisms, but all organisms are made of water. The areas made of water include the cytoplasm and the space between the cells. So in the next lesson, we'll be talking about cytoplasm and the makeup of that in those spaces between cells, which is just water. So water encompasses everything in a living organism. Again, almost about 80% of it. Now what's so special about water? Now do understand that water is considered a polar molecule. So what does polar mean? Well, this means that electrons will spend more time at one end of the molecule than the other end. And this is because of a sharing of the electrons in a covalent bond between the oxygen and a hydrogen. And this means that those bonds, or basically those atoms, it's not an equal sharing. Now in this picture here, we have this big blue circle, which is our oxygen, and we have these little circles, which are hydrogen. Now in the next slide, as I'll show you here, our big oxygen has a negative charge and our hydrogens share a positive charge. And this basically means that more of the electrons are using, are going around the oxygen. So oxygen has a, a more sharing, basically. It gets more of those electrons than the hydrogens do. So this side of the water molecule becomes more negative, whereas the hydrogen side becomes more positive. Now this allows for hydrogen bonds to form. So because water is considered a polar molecule because of those unequal sharing of electrons, they can form something called hydrogen bonds. Now hydrogen bonds are weak electrical attractions between the slightly negative oxygen with the slightly positive hydrogen. So a weak bond is, sh is shared here. Now this bond is weak, so while it is attracted, think of opposites attract, while it is attracted here, it is fairly weak and it's easy to break. But it's these two things of water. So it's th because of these two abilities of water, the hydrogen bonds and being polar, that allows water to have several properties that are very important to humans and to all life here on Earth. So water is a very special, special molecule. So let's take a look at why water is so special. First, water helps moderate temperature. Water has this ability to resist change in temperature because it has something known as high specific heat, or it also has something called high heat capacity. So this means that, or high specific heat means, that it takes a lot of energy to change the temperature of water. This means that water can absorb and store a lot of heat while only warming up a few degrees. Think about when you last jumped into a pool or went into the ocean. Chances are, if it was a really hot day, you jumped into the water and it felt pretty cool it didn't really take up a whole lot of energy in order to be as hot as the outside air. And this is because of the high heat, uh, I'm sorry, the high specific heat of water. It takes a lot of energy for it to even raise a few degrees. This is important because of water's ability to resist changes in temperature, which helps us mo <coughs> moderate body temperature. Water maintains homeostasis in our bodies and all living things. So if you think of something that hibernates, even though the outside air is completely chilly or cold below freezing, the body of the hibernating animal is actually a, just a bit cooler than probably normal, but it's not as cold as the outside. The body is not freezing. And so this is because of water's ability to resist that change in temperature, which is going to moderate that. The second property of water is that water is a good solvent. It's also known as the universal solvent 
because a lot of different things can dissolve very easily in water. So molecules, or solutes, dissolve in water easily to form solutions. Think of your favorite drink. Maybe it's sweet tea. Think of the ocean. It's made of salt water. These are things that easily dissolve in water to form solutions. The importance here is that you must know that cells, because they're mostly water, they actually have a lot of dissolved molecules in them. These dissolved molecules are really important for life. So these molecules are involved in those chemical reactions that keep those, basically, that keeps bodies moving. And this is metabolism. If the molecules were not dissolved, then they wouldn't be able to react with each other. So there would be no chemical reactions in the body. And then basically, you wouldn't be alive. So because water is able to dissolve a whole, whole lot of dissolve or other molecules, this is what keeps these chemical reactions going. So water plays a huge role in these things. Water also rids the body of waste products. One of the reasons why it's very important to continuously drink water throughout the day is that your body uses that to flush out the toxins and to flush out waste products. If your body did not have enough water to do this, then you wouldn't be able to go to the bathroom. You wouldn't pee. Without peeing, you don't get rid of waste products. So it's very important for you to stay hydrated because water rids the body of these waste products. So water is also cohesive. Now there's another term up here, which is called cohesion. These two terms are used interchangeably, just different parts of speech. So I say that water is cohesive, but I also say that there's cohesion. So cohesion occurs between two water molecules. So it's just a different part of speech. So cohesion is the attraction between substances of the same kind. So think of two water molecules. They kind of stick together. They like to stick, and that is in quotations. They stick together because of hydrogen bonds. And that's what's so important about these hydrogen bonds and water being cohesive. So the molecules at the surface of water are linked together by those hydrogen bonds we talked about earlier, which causes surface tension. Now you see in this picture here, there's a bug that is walking on water, and that is because of the surface tension. Those water molecules are bonded by hydrogen bonds, which basically is that cohesive factor between the two water molecules, and that causes surface tension. Surface tension prevents the surface of water from stretching or breaking, and that's allowing that particular bug in that picture to walk on water. You can see the little indents there. Surface tension also allows water to bead, for example, on the leaves in the picture, which form droplets. And this is what causes rain to fall like little droplets as well. So some can be bigger, some can be smaller. It depends upon the amount of water that happens to be cohesive with each other. Another property, or the fourth property we're going to talk about that is really important for life is water is adhesive. So once again, you see this, this word up at the top that's circled, this is adhesion. Same word, different part of speech. They both mean the same thing. So adhesion is the attraction between different substances. Now this means that a water molecule can stick to another substance. And when I say stick, I, I mean just they're attracted to each other, partly because of those hydrogen bonds, partly because of that polar molecule. Now this is important because capillary action occurs. Now in this picture, actually both pictures, we view capillary action. Now capillary action is the movement of water molecules upward through those narrow tubes that happen to be, let's say, inside a plant, which is known as xylem, or through those little passages that go through the plant, or go through the paper towel. So if you've ever done the paper towel thing, you have observed capillary action. 
So what happens is the water is sticking to the sides of the xylem or those tubes that run up from the bottom of a plant all the way to the top. The attraction of the water that's to the walls is actually stronger than the pull of gravity. And if you were to take a straw and just put it in a water, the liquid would actually rise slightly above where that water resides or the liquid inside your straw. So it's just a little above the, the highest point of your water or liquid inside the straw. And that's because the water is actually attracted very strongly to the walls of that straw. Thus, it kind of overcomes gravity slightly. We'll be talking more about capillary action when we talk about plants. The fifth and final property of water that we're going to discuss is that water expands upon freezing. Now you might question why is this so important, but it's because of that density here. So ice is actually less dense than liquid water because water expands as it freezes. Now I'm sure you have experienced putting something into the freezer, uh, let's say a water bottle that has been uh, put all the way up to the top with water, or perhaps a soda can maybe you put a soda can in the freezer and that explodes or your water bottle explodes and that's because as the ice expands or as it freezes it expands and there's no place for it to go so it's got to go somewhere so it breaks your bottle and explodes now the importance here is not about the coke can it's actually about that ice floats so the water the ice's density is is actually less than the liquid water and so it floats now if ice didn't float, chances are it would sink to the bottom of lakes and those rivers, ponds, and then it would cause that entire body of water to freeze over. So if we had no more water, there's no more fishies. So think about that. So ice floats for a reason. Now the floating ice acts as an insulator to those things below it, kind of keeping the water at a nice stable temperature. So outside is a little bit more colder, but underneath in that water, it's actually very nice. Well, very nice and cold, but it keeps it a stable temperature for those things to live. So the five properties of water that we've discussed, we've discussed cohesion, adhesion, how water expands upon freezing, that it makes a great solute, or I'm sorry, it's a universal solvent, and it also acts to moderate temperature.